Hi, and welcome to the new section of this course, Pre-Model Workflow. In this section, we will start with linear model in the presence of outliers, then move on to using Gaussian processes for regression. And finally, we will be using SGD for regression. Now let's move on to the video, linear model in the presence of outliers. In this video, instead of traditional linear regression, we will try using the Thiel-Sen estimator to deal with some outliers. Then we'll show off some more of Pipeline's power. We'll also chain together multiple pre-processing steps to show how Pipelines can remove extra work. First create the data corresponding to a line with a slope of 2. For that we need to import data sets from sklearn, then import numpy as np. Next import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then we will take num points as 100. We will take x values, np.arrange, that is num points. Take another variable y truth which equals 2 into x values. Now plot x values, y truth. Once it is plotted, check the graph using the command plot.show. Next add noise to the data and label it as y noisy. For that, create a variable using this command. After creating, change y values of some points in the line. Post that, plot title with this command. Enable the axis to determine the x-axis limit using the plot.xlim command. At last, scatter plot x values, y noisy, and marker equals x. Now let's see the scatter plot using the command plot.show. Let's clear this out. Import both linear regression and Thiel Sen regressor. Score the estimators using the original line as the testing set, y truth. First, import linear regression, Thielsen regressor from sklearn.linear model. Then import r2, mean absolute error from sklearn.metrics. With the help of this command, create a named estimator, that is OLS and TSR. With this for loop, we will get the OLSs and TSRs, r squared and mean absolute error. So here is the r squared and mean absolute error for both. Plot the lines. Note that ordinary least squares, OLS, is way off the truth line, y truth. Thielsen overlaps the real line. Plot the x values, y truth, and label as true line with this command. Now use plot.legend to locate the upper left. It's time to check the plot, so use plot.show command, and you should get the output as shown here. After that, plot the data set and the estimated lines. For that, use this for loop. We will generate the estimated line for the plot. Use plot.legend command to locate the upper left. Next, plot title, that is noise, in y direction. Plot the x limit using plot.xlim command. Finally, scatter plot x values, y noisy, with marker as x and color as red. Let's see the scatter plot using plot.show command. Cool, here is the plot. Let's clear this. Let's see it's working. The Thiel Sen regressor is a robust estimator that performs well in the presence of outliers. You can try several robust estimators in scikit-learn version 0.19.0. .0. For that, import some libraries. Here are the libraries that we need to import. Next, create named estimators. Here is the estimators list. After that, use this for loop to get the R squared and mean absolute error value for the estimators that we created. Run it, and here are the values for the respective estimators. As you can see, the robust linear estimators, Thielsen, Random Sample Consensus, R-A-N-S-A-C, and the Hubber regressor outperform the other linear regressors in the presence of outliers. Now we will put it all together with pipelines. Now that we've used pipelines and data transformation techniques, we'll walk through a more complicated example that combines several of the videos into a pipeline. First import the load iris from sklearn 
iris.datasets and numpy as np. Let's briefly load the iris dataset. Mask the random binomial using this command. Seed iris data with some missing values. Look at the five columns of the array. The goal is to first impute the missing values of the iris data and then perform PCA on the corrected dataset. You can imagine that this workflow might need to be split between a training dataset and a holdout set. Pipelines will make this easier, but first we need to take a baby step. Let's load the required libraries. Next, create the imputter and PCA classes. Now that we have the classes we need, we can load them into pipeline. Next, we will transform and fit the iris data. Let's check with the columns of an array. This takes a lot more management if we use separate steps. Instead of each step requiring a fit transform, this step is performed only once, not to mention that we only have to keep track of one object. Hopefully it was obvious, but each step in a pipeline is passed to a pipeline object via a list of tuples, with the first element getting the name and the second getting the actual object. Under the hood, these steps are looped through when a method such as fit transform is called on the pipeline object. Now we will make a pipeline with imputter and PCA. NA with the help of this command, we will get the required pipeline. This is the same object that we created in the more verbose method. So let's transform it using this command. And finally, check the columns of an array. We just walked through pipelines at a very high level, but it's unlikely that we will want to apply the base transformation. Therefore, the attributes of each object in a pipeline can be accessed using a setParams method, where the parameter follows the step name, step parameter convention. For example, let's change the PCA object to use two components. Here is the entire command. Notice n component equals 2 in the earlier output. Just as a test, we can output the same transformation we have already done twice, and the output will be an n by 2 matrix. So for that, we will create another array that is transformed 3, and we will fit and transform it. So check the columns of the array and you will get the output like this. So here we have come to the end of this video.